In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that, by keeping your precepts, we may merit to attain eternal life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Zechariah. Raising my eyes, I saw a vision. It was this. There was a man with a measuring line in his hand. I asked him, Where are you going? He said, To measure Jerusalem, to find out her breadth and her length. And then, while the angel who was talking to me stood still, another angel came forward to meet him. He said to him, Run and tell that young man this, Jerusalem is to remain unwalled because of the great number of men and cattle there will be in her. But I, it is the Lord who speaks, I will be a wall of fire for her all round her, and I will be her glory in the midst of her. Sing, rejoice, daughter of Zion, for I am coming to dwell in the middle of you. It is the Lord who speaks. Many nations will join the Lord on that day. They will become his people. The Word of the Lord. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. O nations, hear the word of the Lord, proclaim it to the far-off coasts. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and guard him as a shepherd guards his flock. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, has saved him from an overpowering hand. They will come and shout for joy on Mount Zion. They will stream to the blessings of the Lord. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Then the young girls will rejoice and will dance. The men, young and old, will be glad. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will console them, give them gladness for grief. The Lord will guard us as a shepherd guards his flock. Alleluia, alleluia. Open our heart, O Lord, to accept the words of your Son. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At a time when everyone was full of admiration for all he did, Jesus said to his disciples, For your part, you must have these words constantly in your mind. The Son of Man is going to be handed over into the power of men. But they did not understand him when he said this. It was hidden from them so that they should not see the meaning of it, and they were afraid to ask him about what he had just said. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You must have these words constantly in your mind. In the New Revised Standard Version Bible, it says, Let these words sink into your ears. In New American Bible, or I call it my parents' version, it says, Pay attention to what I am telling you. 
When your parents or your boss or someone that you respect said this to you, I imagine you would really pay attention to what they are telling you word by word. When they suddenly say this to you, it's either you did something wrong or it's just them wanting to stress or to emphasize some information for you. Normally when I get these kind of words from my parents, my formators or even myself telling my students when I was teaching in school to pay attention to what I'm going to tell them, it is always on the basis of you can't see it now, only later you will realize that I was not wrong. Or you don't get it now, but later when you grow old, you will understand. Jesus today in the gospel is asking the apostles to pay attention and to have these words constantly in their mind, to have the words sink into their ears, that the Son of Man is going to be handed over to the power of man. In other words, Jesus is telling them that he will suffer and die. But the apostles didn't get it and they were confused and afraid to ask him, what's this suffering and death all about? Aren't we all the same as the apostles? When we face the reality of suffering in our lives, in our own lives, or the lives of those we love, we can often be confused at first. We don't even understand why this is happening to us, and we will begin to question God. Why me? I don't get it. Its meaning behind all this suffering was hidden, just like how the apostles was not able to comprehend Jesus' words. Suffering is most often unavoidable. Suffering applies to all regardless of our status in life. If we do not allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives, Suffering will lead us to confusion and despair. So how to understand our suffering? Like the apostles, they understood about Jesus' need to undergo suffering and death when the Holy Spirit descended upon them and leading them into the truth. If we allow the Holy Spirit to open our minds, we will begin to understand how God can work in us through our sufferings, just as God brought salvation to the world through the sufferings of His Son, Jesus Christ. And so today, let us reflect on how well we understand both Jesus' sufferings and my own many crosses in life. Am I allowing the Holy Spirit to reveal to me the meaning and the value of suffering. May the Holy Spirit enlighten us and lead us to fully see and understand this great mystery and to find even greater value in His cross as well as our many crosses in life. Trusting in our crucified Lord, let us ask the courage and strength to carry our crosses as we say in confidence the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us pray. Graciously raised up, O Lord, those you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord bless us all and our loved ones in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed weekend and until then, take care of yourself and take care of each other.